girls, time to wake up, ship up, shape out. It is time for the budget meeting for the Board of Trustees Butler Community College. We need to call roll. Nope, it's no roll session. call. Forrest will be here shortly, but we're gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kent, who will begin to explain the budget again. Let me share my screen. Tell us where you're gonna start, what page? With this or this or this. We'll yeah, I gave you each a, you. a handout which is on the screen. I'll, I'll try to kind of um, move the document along on the screen, but it's a uh, just a uh, paper handout. It's about um, 25 pages front to back here. It says budget work session April 25, 2022. Topics for discussion. Um, we want to talk, spend some time talking about the uh, budget timeline. Um, then we'll, uh, if there's some information on our cash reserves, um, <clears throat> there's a three year projection of the operating budget. And then we want to spend some time um, talking about the uh, um, information requests from Trustee Winslow for budget and personnel cost information. And I want to add just one other thing before you leave. I want to talk about the commencement activities and stuff for just a few minutes too before everybody gets up and walks away. So that's not the reason. It's sort of official. <laughs> <laughs> so just hopping down here to the page two, which I'll put up here. On the uh, anticipated timeline, so there's um, some, you know, we have quite a few things scheduled. There's some major decisions, obviously, that the trustees will need to be making in the next um, couple months. And so I've listed out the, the various meetings here. Um, I would say just um, the two major decisions that are be, going to be coming up are obviously going to be the uh, local taxes to be levied. That's a big one. And so kind of keep the eye, our eye on the prize there. The other one we really need to um, think about is what the board will uh, support for um, compensation increases for the employees. And we'll talk about those uh, here on the timeline. So the next, um, after today, the next um, meeting will be uh, May 10th, which is a regular finance or board meeting. And of course we'll have a finance committee. And then um, on May 23rd, there'll be another, <clears throat> right now we have another work session on the schedule. Um, June 14th is a regular meeting. Then on, uh, hi Forrest. We're just getting started more page one of this information that we, or page two of that information. So on June 15th, and um, we'll get information from the county clerk um, giving us our revenue neutral rate. We, we know pretty much what that revenue neutral rate is gonna be at, if it, in terms of uh, taxes to be levied, it's gonna be the same as the, taxes that were levied uh, for the current year. And then it will be a matter of what the um, official estimated valuation is that determines the revenue neutral rate. And I might back up a minute um, just to talk about the, the information in general that's in this uh, document that I handed out, obviously, uh, we didn't give you any of this information in advance. We want to walk through it. We're not going to, there's not going to be any decisions that we expect to have uh, today. The real purpose is just to start communication going into this final phase of the budget, both for uh, the trustees to have communication among your, your group and for the trustees to have communication with the administration. So we have clear direction and there's obviously gonna be various points where that communication will happen. 
So that's kind of why I wanted to walk through the calendar to get started. Um, if you're not real familiar with the revenue neutral rate, we'll get into that a little more as we uh, move through here. So then on June 27, there's another um, work session scheduled. And then on June 30, we have our accounting closed. And also I might mention that during June, the administration normally has a strategic planning um, retreat. And I uh, visited with Dr. Uh, Carl just a little bit about that. And we're gonna have some more conversation in our BP group about that. So we'll start working on the uh, strategic plan for the following year budget. Um, okay, so we're at June 30 and that's our close. And um, then the regular board meeting is July 12. And I'd like to talk just a little bit about that time frame because we uh, bring you back a preliminary report on the uh, close on the 22 budget. Um, and one of the main things there is, you know, what's going to be our cash reserve from the operating budget. We've budgeted for a 2%, um, no, 4% unspent budget, which is about $2 million. Um, I did some cursory, cursory analysis of that, and I, I think there's a chance uh, we'll be there. Um, it's a real uh, busy time for Carrie and the accounting crew. Um, it takes about four days, I guess, to actually close the books. We have July 4th in there. And so coming up with the um, preliminary report uh, really is a, uh, it's a busy time for the accounting staff. I'll just say that. And at that time, um, the board really needs to make a decision on this revenue neutral rate. And if, if the board does choose to exceed the revenue neutral rate, obviously the preliminary recommendation that we brought forward, the administration brought forward in the March uh, information would call for exceeding the, the revenue neutral rate. Also, uh, some, some uh, municipal entities and colleges, in fact, most of them on the from the recommendation from the uh, Department of Administration choose to publish uh, that they, they will exceed the revenue neutral rate just to protect um, from the actual taxes going down in November because the um, if you would um, because the valuation estimate that we receive at the end of June can change it, uh, between June and November, and if that uh, goes down, then the revenue neutral rate would go down because it's actually based on the um, mill levy rather than the taxes. So. We can talk more about that if you have questions about it, but um, that will be a decision that will have to be made or should be made, well, it will have to be made by July 12th. So we need to think about these meetings that we have in between here to um, have the board come to a, a consensus among yourselves whether or not you plan to exceed the revenue neutral rate. Kim, am I correct in saying that just because we decide that we may exceed it so the notice goes out doesn't mean that we have to exceed it? That's correct. It's, it's like the notice of public hearing. It sets a max, the notice of public hearing sets a max. Uh, you don't have to go th that far. You can always go less. Um, I would argue that whatever we set, we're going to keep. Oh, yeah. So uh, I would prefer not to set something higher saying that we won't possibly get later. So that'll be a decision that the board as a whole will need to make uh, by July 12th. So, yeah, so then on the 15th, if we 
if the decision is made to exceed, I would need to have that um, certified down to the county clerk. That's the, uh, the note there on July 15th. If in fact the um, decision was made to um, publish intent to exceed, the county clerk would take all of the um, all of those notices from all the entities in the county and the county clerk then would be responsible for notifying the taxpayers uh, per the statutes. Uh, July 25th um, is a work session, a normal day for a work session. I don't think it's scheduled at this time, but it's the um, mon you know, Monday, two weeks after the board meeting. So it would normally be a work schedule work session in the schedule that you've maintained this year. Um, and we probably will need to um, make that a special meeting and approve the notice of public hearing uh, at that time. And um, then at the August meeting, uh, there's nothing particularly, usually we, in the past, we've had the public hearing at the regular August meeting. Um, that will be possible if we don't exceed the revenue neutral rate. But if we exceed the revenue neutral rate, then per the statute, you can't have the um, you can't have the hearing prior to August twentieth. So we would have to push back the the date. Um, and the 22nd would be a, a practical date to have that. So again, a lot depends on whether that uh, the board chooses to exceed the revenue neutral rate. If you do, then there would we would combine, there, there has to be two separate hearings, but they can happen at the same time. So if, um, if the revenue neutral rate was exceeded, I would say the best thing to do is on August 22nd, have both the revenue neutral rate hearing and the public hearing um, for the legal budget. So you could talk about the special meeting being on the 22nd? Yes. Okay, well, you realize that we have a special meeting. We don't include public speaking. So we would have to vote to revise the agenda for special meetings to include public. Speaking. Yeah, the, uh, that meet, I would intend that to be a, a special meeting uh, only for, I mean, you could add other topics, but particularly for public hearing. So public hearing in and of itself I means that there was- I understand, I'm just telling you, I got told okay, you I, not use that, that it was gonna be like it always has been. And when we have a special meeting, we do not address public concerns. So I would, I would like to uh, come to a point at some meeting, maybe the next week to change that. So maybe I'll motion that at okay. the next meeting regular meeting, the public hearings always have an opportunity for public call. Or any special meeting. I would agree meeting. with Julie that anytime we have a special meeting, we should just have a little line item that the public wishes to speak if they can. Public general let's let's keep speak. going. That's right, the right, topic. Right. I think that's what she's saying. She still wants to do it. Um, no, it's, I, there, it's, it's a discussion item. We've got a ton of stuff to cover in in a special in our work session today, let's not get sidetracked on something that we're not going to talk about. We're not going to decide. I today. don't want I, to forget. I spoke for 15 seconds. I think we're good. I was going over and over again. Linda, you're going to drive on. <laughs> good license. Flashlight. Any, any other questions about the um, budget calendar? <laughs> if not, I'd like to, to move on to the, the next topic. Hey, we're right on time here. So I set my timer can. I'm going to watch the clock. <laughs> so I wanted to um, spend some time going over our cash reserves. I know we've had um, discussion on that at uh, the March 28th uh, work session where we presented the update. There were questions about it. Um, obviously, um, with the Per funds in particular, um, our cash reserves have increased over the past um, the past couple of years more than normal. 
And I'd like to, um, on, on page three, I've done a little table that estimates where I think um, approximately we may end up. But on page four, five, and six, um, kind of like to draw your attention to that. These are our document pages from last July, which show on page 30, or not, it's actually page four with a handwritten number. It was page 30 of the report last year. And somehow I've gotten off here. There we go. So um, you can see that our, our cash on hand at the end of last year uh, was 30,688,000. Um, the reconciled um, balance of our funds on page five at the end of last year was 29,556,960. Um, I think I said that backwards. The operating, the fund balances were the 30 million on page four. The actual cash in the bank was the 29 million that shows on page five. And then our, excuse me, our liabilities and encumbrances are on page six. And there was a little unusual situation where um, a, re a receivable for federal funds got shown as a negative liability there. But um, so the, the fund balances last year of the 30 million, um, I would say of that, about 7 million was of her funds that we'd received and uh, were just on hand at that time. So I just wanted to give you that background. Again, that's it's quite a bit higher than normal for our, um, our year in cash. So I'd like to go back to page three. I don't know if you have any questions on that. I could. But, uh, and we're spending down those her funds on, like the the HVAC and some of the that money will be spent. Right, and we're going to go through some of that as we walk down through this sheet on page three. So the the. Um, First value there, 7,742,000. That's the operating fund. So um, the budget book that looked like this that we gave you in March, if you go back and look at the operating budget at that time, that is the, the balance that we had expected to uh, end up with this year in the operating funds. Um, we have some designated funds various designated funds uh, in the general fund um, that I'm estimating will be a total of about $1.3 million. Again, if you, if you want to see the detail of that, it's on page S1 of this uh, notebook or booklet that we gave you back in um, March. So there's it's a whole page of different um, designated funds in the general fund. And then uh, I'm estimating about 500,000 for the designated uh, PTE funds. Those are the tech uh, area designated funds. And then you'll see the um, designated um, her funds here, the 2.3 million, um, which um, will likely still be in um, in the general designated fund for her funds at the end of the year. Uh, one thing that I want to mention there, uh, there's several things that we've talked about using this fund for. Um, we're going to look some at deferred maintenance later on. Um, also, um, Ryan Murray will be giving us an update on our insurance at the May board meeting. So far, we've set aside half a million dollars for a um, 
reserve for deductibles. Uh, it's likely that the deductible this year for one event uh, could reach up to 1.1 million because of the difficulty we're having in uh, securing property uh, insurance with a reasonable deductible. So might just keep that in mind. And when I interrupt, when you're looking at the curve, uh, this 2.3 million, it's on page, this list is on page seven in your handout that's stapled. Together. Yeah, thank you. I meant to mention that. Yeah. What do you attribute the biggest uh, doubt of our ability to cover our losses with insurance or an increase like this in premiums this year? So there's going to be substantial. I, I think it's, it's two things. It's mostly it's the insurance market in general for institutions such as ours in this region, uh, basically what's often referred to as Tornado Alley. Um, in, I think, again, we've talked a lot about this, but uh, about seven years ago, we had a $7 million hail claim. I know we're probably not the only uh, institution that's had that so the market, I think, is reacting to that. I'm not an expert in that, and Ryan will be able to, to talk better than I uh, when he meets with you next month. Uh, but that that's the biggest thing. And our well, inflation is driving it somewhat, you know, because property uh, replacement costs are going up significantly. I mean, you can look at the housing market. Yeah. And labor too. So there's. What about, what about the liability end? I don't have any additional um, knowledge about liability and and how. As far as I know, we're not looking at a big change there. But again, I'm kind of. Ryan uh, will be able to update you more. Um, the um, applications are in process right now. And so he hasn't received all the information back from the various carriers that he's working with. So kind of going down the, um, uh, there's a typo, but um, the academic, it should say academic, academic program development fund. Do the information technology fund. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm jumping way ahead. The information technology fund, and that's, and there's a spending plan, and I don't know, if, you know, if you have questions or if Bill wants to make comments on that, and that's on page eight of the information. I had to kind of uh, put this in three different sections to get it to print on one page here. But Bill, did you want to talk about that? Sure. So as we've talked, the the technology IT fund is what we're leveraging to be able to maintain and continue with um, our upgrades and replacements as they come due as to not have to tap back into a no levy to, to make that happen. And so when I put out there on page eight, it's it's about the it takes us to 2030. Those are the types of projects that we're likely going to see come up, the types of replacements we're going to see um, disaster recovery and backup. So there's some changes on how we handle that that's going to take place next year. We have to add to our storage array. We've got virtual desktops. I mean, just those are the types of things that it has to get spent on as we, as those kind of replacement cycles come through. If you look down the network, the wired and Wi-Fi, uh, which is slated for $350,000 for 2028. Now that puts us 10 years out from when we did this last this last change. And so that's it's kind of lifespan of, of this technology. Um, and the plan is to utilize the uh, technology fee that we hear, the technology access charge that we collect, as well as um, you know, just whatever other income we have in, in, inside this fund to help pay for all that. Over the next eight years, I mean, if, if, if we're able to accomplish everything on that list over the next eight years, you're looking at nearly $5 million worth of stuff, but it's money that, uh, that we are able to uh, save up a technology fund to make that happen so that we don't have to go to the tax. That's plan. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll have some questions later after I read it. Maybe. Sure. Um, I'm all surprised. 
<laughs> but I appreciate that comment, Shelby, because that's right, that's, that's sort of what we're we're early. here for to show you this in general, give you a chance to to look at it and come back with questions. Um, not that we wouldn't entertain questions today, but there's quite a bit to go through. So uh, going down the list, the next item is the Academic Promac Program Development Fund. Uh, there's 370,000 in there now. Um, and again, on page nine of the information that I've given you, uh, Dr. Neville has um, shown an, uh, as an anticipated spending plan. Uh, and again, Tom, I don't know if you want to speak to this, but to identified about $220,000 of items. Yeah, uh, the, some of these things are, um, some of these items are definitely directly related to program startups or some other initiatives that we've uh, started at the college. Um, there is, uh, as you can see, we, we launched the direct enroll initiative. So we're uh, kind of retooling that. And I think the last report that Kelly gave us was we we spent about six thousand uh, dollars with our consultants at this point. Um, our IR request for student data. I know uh, Esom's here. If you guys have any questions about exactly what that's going to entail, uh, but that that's that funds have been committed out of this this um, out of the spending plan. Uh, we've we've uh, upped our OER game a little bit here, uh, trying to see about how we can again further uh, more costs. Um, uh, deferred costs from our students for textbooks, uh, reducing those costs. As you remember last month, we were at 1.8 million so far in uh, savings. And um, diesel tech, uh, which you all approved last, last board meeting. Uh, so these are funds above and beyond what we're able to spend with our um, with, with some of our maintenance effort, effort funding. So I remember it's a new program. So there's gonna be some startup costs. Uh, we're looking at some banners, some signage that'll go in town and uh, on campus. Uh, those haven't been committed yet. We've mentioned we've, we're looking at marketing college in, in uh, Wichita and buses that hasn't been committed yet. And um, with our new uh, mobile broadcast trailer, there's going to be some equipment needed that uh, will be related to our mass comm program. So again, these are program specific related funds. And yeah, I mean, we do have funding to spend, but you know, as we start thinking about additional programs or future programs that may be coming uh, as a result of shift in industries and things, you know, we wanna have some, some startup money if there's, if there's a need for any types of those programs that might need some startup funds. Are you pretty committed to this, to this exact list? Uh, everything on the right is committed. Yeah, those those items have been. Anything uh, that has no no amount there, we have not committed to. Well, there's an amount, but I, it's not committed. It's just no. an expanding program. I just have my two cents. I think the preliminary from last month had like more than twenty five thousand dollars in advertising plus something higher for that plus something else. I think as a board, I would like to discuss if we want to throw half a million dollars at advertising. I would like to discuss that as much as yes, I would money like after to money discuss after money. That. All the time we're talking about a lot of money and possibly raising not raising taxes. I'd like to just discuss that. Yeah, and, and there will be time yeah, yeah. to do that. Um, but seeing fifty thousand dollars for put advertising on buses that's... in Wichita just made me think of that. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, I mean if you know there's a budget for no, marketing I just, next I year. We wouldn't have to commit to the same thing. It's like yeah. Cali summer and they've got a tiger or a bear. I don't know what it is. Surfing. <laughs> Come here for summer classes. I'm like, you're not going to have in Wichita, but I mean, so just, yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah, there'll definitely be time to visit about that. Other comments on the uh, development fund? Uh, yeah. When, when, when would we have time to, to discuss this? Well, you know, going back to the calendar, um, you know, I would say the next work session would be, uh, I think, the best time that'll give everybody time to kind of absorb some of this information. And we need to get into it by that time, uh, because we'll start moving towards that uh, date when you have to prove the revenue neutral or not. So I would say the next work session or the, would be good. Or yeah, that's probably the best time. I do want to talk about a little later, um, well, the, the actual board meeting 
in May, but that would be a very specific topic. Uh, I do need to go back or would like to go back. There's one, one figure that I wanted to point out on page seven at the bottom. Uh, this is the HERF designated fund again. And, and these monies came into the college for various reasons, like we were able to claim loss of revenue. So we took the federal money, put it, money and put it right into the general fund. And that way um, it becomes general fund money and the board has the, the right to spend that as you choose. One of the things that we would like to have further discussion on, and again, this is gonna be at one of these upcoming meetings, um, is that uh, way back when we first started getting the HERF money, we had talked about setting aside $800,000 for what we called service recognition awards at that time. So I don't wanna, uh, this, it probably isn't the proper time to talk about that, but I just wanna point out that that is, one of the things that we will want to talk to you about as we go through talking about compensation for the employees and so forth. Some of the institutions with those HERF funds gave service recognition awards to their employees because of the impact of COVID and because they had to change classes and working, you know, working situations and all that sort of stuff. These funds would, would go to the people that were directly impacted during that COVID time frame not necessarily new employees that have come to us since then. But and which would... line is that? It's clear at the bottom. On page seven. Page seven. Oh, right down there. So Thank you. <coughs> it's for like employees who, who spent about 80 to 100 hours that week trying to get everything all ready to, to go forward <laughs> online and things like that. Yeah, it, well, and some of the institutions gave them for that spring semester, some for spring and fall semester, just because of disruptive work schedules and you know, all that sort of stuff. So, but we didn't leave anybody off of COVID. Yeah, they could have got home. They thought there was. No, we did not. No, they were not. Line 16. Why do we keep having BKD at 115? I thought it was like 111 last time. What we approved was 40 ish. Yeah, the two options. It's just an estimated amount that was in here. A lot of these are estimates at this time. And that would include the other modules. Can't yeah, sorry. But these oh, sorry. were all of them were like under 70. You may be right. I may need to update that. I'll go back and look at it. The, jumping back, the designated general fund, you have 1.3 million that refers to page S1. I don't see. No, it's that's just an estimate of where I think we may end up. What I showed you there was information from a previous um, report, and it just gives a kind of an idea. We don't know where all of those are going to end up. So I just rounded to an estimate that I thought might be. I mean, the balance as of the end of February was 7.2 million, and you're suggesting 1.3 million. Well, of that 7.2, uh, a lot of that is the HERF money. Oh, okay. Okay. So I split. Okay. I just have one quick question. Yes. I read an article in one of the, I think it was the prison, about mold in one of the buildings. <laughs> I just picked it up and read it. Don't look at me. I didn't write it. So tell me how that fares. When is that going to be? Because it's honestly, we're not right now, aren't we? Before anything else on here. I don't think we, uh, Arlen. Uh, that article was actually written last fall, early fall, and it was reposted again. That uh, building in 300, it was the one we were doing the major HVAC upgrade, the total replacement. Okay. So it's in process and now to be finished first part of June. Uh, to be done? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and the other area was 200 mm -hmm. building and it was all uh, the bell for restoration came in and, and took care of it over a 30 day period. So. so it's fixed and won't happen again? Or did it just well, get cleaned up? Well, I hope not. Never, <laughs> but yes. Uh, it's temporarily a bit of it. Happen. What happens is, you know, you know, especially in the high humidity in the summer, uh, the heating and air isn't running all the time, or at least on and off uh, more than it should be. Those offices were all vacant over the summer, 
my staff wasn't going in at that time. Our policy has changed. We're walking through every office, every city, now to clarify that things are good and work in order. But we just okay. basically left those offices and didn't check the initials. Uh, but yes, everything, all, all those areas are being addressed in these projects that they were doing. In the 300 bill. All, all, the, all the mole's been taken care of. It, it, happen, it happens periodically. Our facilities people are really good. When we get notified of it, they have a restoration company and, and you deal with it. It happens in institutions like this periodically. Old, old, old age vaccine. Especially, especially when you have the equipment that's over 50 years old, it is only a two-byte system. It doesn't have both heating and cooling. So we can address that at the time, or uh, that's what the funds are being Well, used. in two buildings, we are 300, 500 have the upgrades. We still have the old two pipe systems in the 600s, the 400s, the 200s. Yeah, actually, we're going to talk about deferred maintenance here in just a minute. So, so thanks, I just the two, four, and 600 building will be left as far as the updated systems. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Okay. Eight hundred. All the older buildings. All the older buildings. So us freezing in here, we're going to get all the way. This building doesn't have multiple problems. It helps. Yeah, yeah. And some are either. Pneumonia is a side effect, but it helps. The rest of the other side effect. But no. We're kind of moving on down our our list here. I can vouch for that. I think the next item. Would be the facilities fund. Uh, this um, this is shown on page ten of your information. This was a the report that was in the March update, and you can see the various items uh, that that were planned on on spending about eight hundred seventy six thousand dollars this year to take care of various items here. Uh, we had another two hundred fifty thousand that we're going to put in from the. Um, the uh, cash reserves from last year. Um, so we, we think we may have a, a balance left over there, but I also know that Ireland's come up with some new projects. So that 250,000 um, may be spent down to zero. There's a lot of, uh, these are what I would call uh, mid-level mid projects. They're not the million dollar renovations. They're, they're uh, smaller projects um, that we have to deal with on an annual basis. Uh, the next item is the insurance deductible. We have set aside 500,000 and I just made a note there that we really probably need to talk about whether or not we want to set aside another half a million dollars on that. Um, then we have the strategic innovation reserve uh, a little over $2 million. One thing we want to talk a little bit about here, and I know we're um, using a lot of our time here, but um, we, we've taken a look at our reporting out of our banner processes, and we think there's a lot of improvements that could be made, uh, similar to what we're doing with the um, contribution margin analysis that BKD is working with us. But, um, you know, just within finance, uh, we've identified three areas we'd like to get improvement on that are really manual processes. One of it is the, the payroll um, budgeting and reconciliation. Uh, Carrie, as the budget uh, analyst every year, uh, prepares a worksheet. And we're going to talk a little bit more, more about this one in particular later, uh, where we uh, manually list all the individual employee budget amounts to tie back into the departmental budgets at that time. It's a very manual, time-consuming process. Uh, also, the um, our inventory process and our scholarship process are quite time-intensive. Um, and so uh, also in the HR and payroll, we think there's uh, 
number of processes and maybe even uh, enrollment management. Uh, Bill Young and I talked a little bit about this and, and we think uh, that it would be beneficial to bring in an IT consultant who specializes in its kind of activity to do a business process analysis and then give us a prioritized list of where the there could be um, software company consultants who would work with us with the banner system to help us automate uh, many of our processes. And um, just in kind of looking at it generally, this isn't something that we've spent a lot of time looking at yet, but we feel like maybe over the next three years, um, investing about $300,000 a year um, would be beneficial. And so we are we don't have a full blown plan on this. I don't know, Bill, if you wanna to speak to it all, but we, we do think tentatively that might be a good use for some of this money. Yes, yeah, so there's an opportunity to, after we go through the, the, the business process piece of it, to engage some staff augmentations of consulting to actually get the reports, the dashboards, the uh, information built in a way so that it's easier to access for everybody involved. Um, so when we get information requests, it's easier to be able to get in and do that. Um, we've ran into capacity issues. I mean, it's like a lot of companies do as far as having to prioritize what we're spending our time on. And I don't have uh, a ton of capacity right now for to dedicate people to just kind of build those reports at this point. So that's that's what this um, is, is referring to. The challenge that you have is it's not like um, you, know, you have to be very specific within Banner, just like you'd have to be specific if you're a company that uses SAP or something else. So we've got to find the right company that can help us, not just with the business process analysis piece, but then with the development of the, uh, the remediation. So. So again, this is one of those items where, as we move through this budget calendar process, we would uh, plan to provide something a little more concrete as we move through. Um, and moving on um, to the deferred maintenance uh, fund, and actually deferred maintenance, capital projects, and capital outlay fund, the next three, all kind of deal with similar uh, themes as a major facilities, either um, upgrading our facilities or taking care of deferred maintenance. And there's, there's two real supplemental items that we wanted to talk to you about here. We've got a, a deferred maintenance list that I want to show you. It's, it's in the booklet here. But I also wanted to give uh, Tom Borrego uh, a little time here because we've had some conversation and there is an opportunity if the, uh, based on the, the lease agreement that we have on the culinary building, that if we wanted to use some of these funds, we could actually um, purchase that building. Tom, would you like to just take some time to walk through that? Yeah, so for the new board, uh, Tom, you got turn it says right there. Uh, the new board members, um, Last uh, year, the uh, a board uh, entered, entered into a lease agreement with the foundation for the use of uh, a, the new culinary building that's being built in Andover. And so um, the foundation's responsibility was to raise funds uh, and, and finance the, the cost of the building um, with the option for the, the college to purchase the building at some point uh, during the lease uh, there's a 10-year lease, and then you have an opportunity to purchase it with two five-year extensions. So there's a total of possible 20 years of lease. You can purchase that building at any time during that time. Um, and so um, as we're going through our fundraising, um, we're having some success. And uh, we were, our target was to try to keep the, the, the financing component somewhere between a million and a million and a half. Uh, that million... Uh, if we financed it a million, it was going to be a lot less than the lease that you were already paying at Boston Rec. And if it was 1.5 million, it's be a little bit more, but it was in the ballpark. And so our goal was to keep the lease in that in that range so that at some point, well, while the lease is going, you could continue to pay on it if you wanted to, or at some point the college could purchase that that uh, uh, property um, and then own that asset. 
and then the foundation would be done with that building. So uh, look at reviewing, re reviewing these funds, we saw that there was a possibility that this might be an opportunity for the college to look at um, purchasing the building um, uh, once we kind of know what that hard number is. But I uh, want to remind the board that that option is available. And, and share with them just a little bit about what, if, if we did go ahead and purchase, mm -hmm. can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, as you know, Scott and Betsy Redler are our, our lead donors on this. <laughs> and um, as Scott has been looking at um, uh, our program in culinary, he's also been thinking about our program in hospitality. And so um, he has begin com began conversations with us about the possibility of he and other partners going in to build another building just east of the culinary building. And uh, that, par that partnership would create a business there, but would create space in that building for our hospitality program, where the, which the college could lease and use that space. But he would use the 1.5 million that he's uh, provided to the foundation in financing and move that if the college were to purchase this property, move that 1.5 over, over into, that, into that project and get that one kicked off and going. So a um, um, lot of opportunity there. Um, and uh, with some funds available, it may be uh, a nice time to try to think that one through and see if it's, it's worth doing. And how many hours is that hospitality? That's a certificate program, correct? Uh, and it's how many hours? Tom, do you know, I don't know that off the top it, of my head. No I, I don't well, know that. Is it a one year? I was thinking it was a one year. I'm curious to ask also, I mean, a lot of our classrooms, they're not busy eight hours a day. I want to know how busy is our culinary building, whereas it could not, could it not hold hospitality and culinary both if it was scheduled? Really There's good. two classrooms in that building right. in culinary. And so yeah, that will be scheduled out. And, and according to the chef's uh, goals, I mean, I don't know the specifics on the use of that those rooms, but I suspect it would be used. Yeah. Right, right. But I mean, I stopped by construction the other day and it was, I guess, a Friday, but it wasn't, there was no one there at all. I mean, I know we have space available to be able to schedule more if we needed to. Tom will have to. I, will have I would to ask the schedule. Yeah, what? For a $2 million building, we're being offered to lease it for twenty two fifty a month, something like that. It's the amount that you're being, um, uh, is, is the amount that was uh, budgeted for your lease over at Boston Rec. And so, um, we, of course, we didn't know at the time we were doing, we didn't know where for that- contract would say that it said it would not exceed that. Number. Right, right. So if it was less, it'd be less, right. but it wouldn't be any more. Right, right. Yeah. That was about 30,000 a year. Yeah. It was like 25,000. 28 just something. in that, that ballpark so this so is obviously curious. i mean is that a so 28 000 a year is what you're paying at least uh, so what are they offering for, to sell you the building at 1.9 million at one point uh, around 1 million to 1.67 kind of in that range depending upon how the finance or the fundraising goes our target right now is 1.6 in financing okay. um and, and it so could be less it, it could be less than that there's a lot of dominoes that are in line right now to help with the cost yeah it would, I would need, that's too big of a range to say whether or not that would be a good idea, but obviously it's just going to come down to, you know, what kind of cap rate you're dealing with, what kind of return you're looking at, and then just the long-term risk of owning it versus renting it. So yeah, once I have all that information. The only thing that, sorry, Tom, but that's I, good. I don't appreciate the foundation built it. They did what they want. We take it or leave it, but now we can buy it. So it's just, it's a go around the board to build a building and then get you to buy it anyway later yeah but they get to, to they get to you don't have to not, we don't have to i understand no, you're, you're so this is what i said earlier and then we didn't get to pick the layout we didn't get to no. design anything we didn't get to have any say in it yeah but so so this is, know, do we want to own no. one more building and have that much more liability right and that all depends on like i said what the the lease rate is and what the lease says i mean is it triple net it's, who's paying it's it's a wood maintenance. Built in, so we're it's paying structure, maintenance anyway metal here. Built structure as yeah well so we're paying maintenance on it anyway if it's triple net so you know yeah like i said it, it would be a numbers game at that point because ultimately you've got no offense kind of a weird building in a location that's not really conducive to what it is because you put it in front of a, an apartment complex and a retail place so you know to me that wasn't office wasn't really highest and best use that's not a dig on the college at all that's the developers they let that go in it's whatever it's a great location for for us as far as visibility but if it ceases to be 
a culinary school, like if this doesn't work out, then what's its use after that? It's going to be really hard to switch to another use and have it be a retail center. I don't instance. think we can. I think we're like, guys, let's, 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 this is going yeah. to be well, no, because to everybody it. else got to make one. So the only comment I want to make is I'm more concerned also about the MPUs that we're already off. Okay. That's a pass subject. Let's move on. No, it's no, not. It and you, here's you, why. You've beefed about this before. This is not the topic for discussion. Right if, now. if we're leasing the building, we can only use it for Tell culinary, me but if we don't. No, I, I really. We're going to get to add a comment. We're yeah, going to move on. Gonna get to add. So I'm Can't the only one force that doesn't get to add No, you're not the only one. You're the only one that's spoken. Because Shelby had a comment. Kim had a Shelby had a question. And I didn't get to make mine. No one else did either. We're moving on. I wanted to make one. I know you Maybe wanted no to. Maybe no one else did, but, but we're I did. staying on the schedule. MOUs we're going to talk about us. it later. You know what's not in there? We are for talking next year, about the this construction later. program at Rose Hill that we're going to get ready to rent again or rent from now on. Like the other MOUs, like Winfield, we pay a portion of those rents. We need from Kim to sit down and say, here they are. Here's all of them in total for all of our MOUs or whatever agreement that we have. Here's our obligations before I can decide whether to have another building. That's all there is to it. Can't let thank you, on, Forrest. Please. Don't be sarcastic, Julie. I'm you're just saying, saying thank you're you. You're not thanking me at all. You're being sarcastic. Let's move on. Okay, I'll be sarcastic. Thanks a lot, Forrest. So going down the list here, uh, we get to deferred maintenance. Excuse me. Capital project. What did you yeah, call me? Kim, please. We what are not you, 12. What did you just call me? I was calling at random lots of people that might be listening to me on the phone. What did you just refer to I didn't me refer as? to you as anything. You well, guys, funny because I heard something different. Well, you I'm know what? I heard somebody ridiculous. else motioning for a different chair too, but I ignored it. If you're going to refer to me with profanity in the middle of one of our work sessions, I'm going to shut you down. You know what? We have to take. You this don't up need on that excuse to shut me down. You do it's it every you. time we come. I am. You have another reason. I am professional no, with not. you. No, you're not. I have never used profanity towards you. No, you, you about just get up in a meeting and announce what we're going to do on behalf of the union, on behalf of the board. And you took me to task for that at the meeting. I have never used profanity. And to anybody you else that wants to talk you. gets to, and I, and I don't. The same in return. I appreciate. The I would appreciate treatment. as the president of this college that we move on that we be civil to each other and we be respectful. This is ridiculous. This is a poor reflection to anybody that's watching and listening about how we manage our meetings and nothing against anybody that's sitting here, but let's move on and let's be professional and let's use our time productively. This is ridiculous. I agree. Okay, moving on. Um, the next three items on the list here, deferred maintenance, uh, capital projects and capital LA. Again, these all kind of relate back to facilities and um, don't want to take a great deal of time. We, we don't have enough time, but on page 11, um, Ireland has prepared a list of critical deferred maintenance items, um, which you can see comes to about $5.7 million. And we would like to at some point um, have more consideration on this and uh, talk about how we might be able to use some of the um, one-time reserve money that we have on hand for these items. And page are you on? That's on page eleven. And then can't tell me one more time on BG. So, like, let's just the the first one, BG Stadium. HVAC controls 25,000. Is that divided between 490 <coughs> and the city? Ireland, do you want to talk about that a little bit quickly? Yeah. Uh, normally, the items like this with BG, the entity, the entity would pay for it. The entity doesn't have very much money. Uh, when the stadium actually froze last winter and we lost all the water and had all the damage and big insurance claim since we were closer to the stadium uh, all the heating and air and stuff was given to, to us this here is a request for twenty five thousand dollars to actually put web controls on it so my staff can monitor it 24 7 during the winter and summer 
just to make sure because that doesn't happen. Yeah. So, so what would happen is if we get this far, we would bring you a specific request or yeah. go through the normal EFABC. purchasing process for this. Well, and it, it would be a conversation we would have at EFABC as well, because I I feel like EFABC should bear the cost basically and to, I don't know in that order to happen. allow in order to allow the right oversight because the web controls then would would provide you know additional oversight and stuff so so it kent and i talked about this when we went through the list um, and it would it would certainly be a conversation at EFABC about that so um the other item that shows on this list here is the campus life fund which we estimate will have about four point five million dollars um, at the end of this year. That's that's pretty normal. It's a it's a healthy balance. Uh, we do know that the, the bookstore is not making money like it used to. So um, I think it's a balance that we need to see about protecting. Um, just on that, I had a little thought the other day when we said we've saved the students one point nine million dollars or two million dollars over the last couple of years since we implemented that. Perhaps we should just raise it five dollars or ten dollars and we can also make a little money on it ourselves and not not only save the students money but also have another some of that is built into the oers and, and um and the other there's there's a couple of things there's oers and then we've contracted for other electronic books and on all of those um there is a, a profit built in for the bookstore it's just not it's not the cash cow that it was right. five to 10 years ago. All I'm saying is that that's $2 million we passed along in savings to the students. Right. Also, and, and, and we're not increasing tuition this year. We can't just take all our extra money. When we need to yeah. I, if we're not willing to charge more for our product. I mean, every product we pay for now is consumers is 10% higher virtually. Right. That's all. Yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, to look at OER is it, it's um, open, just think of it as open, open educational, educational resource. resource. Books. Okay. Yeah. Online. Yeah, I, I can't remember it either. Basically, a book that the faculty the creates library. in an electronic mean a book and other course materials. Well, that's what I thought, but I kind of doesn't sound you bad. know. But also, they said the physical books that we're ordering now are much more reasonable than in the past. So I would like to, I, I think it would be good for us to move on because we do it. If, if student wants to buy the, the physical copy for the English book, it's additional $10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's the um, deal. We're at the bottom of page three there talking about the campus life funds, the four and a half million dollars. So I, I think hopefully this gives you a, a, an idea of where we're at on the cash reserves. Um, and again, as you have time to, to look at this and have more specific questions, we can address this um, as we go through the rest of the um, budget development process towards the uh, board decision that will need to be made in uh, June and July. So now that we're through the, that part, um, I'd like to move on to the operating budget. So on the operating budget, which starts on page uh, 12, 13, and 4, well, starts on page 12, what I've done here is I'd like to focus on, again, as I mentioned early on, two key decision points that the uh, board will need to be making over the next uh, couple months. Uh, one is the compensation for employees, and the second is the uh, amount of taxes to be levied. And what I've done here is uh, create three different scenarios. And um, in order to do that, I had to make certain assumptions. These scenarios look at... Um, the our unencumbered cash over the next three years. So I've had to make estimates, not only for next year, which we gave you uh, uh, the preliminary budget recommendation for next year at the March 28th meeting. 
And um, then I've created assumptions for the 24 and 25 year. So if you look on page 12, um, just kind of go through this. Um, I've made assumptions about credit hour increases, tuition rates, like for this um, basic scenario, I've kept the credit hours the same. I know we could argue about that or, excuse me, debate that, whether that's an appropriate amount or not. What I'd really like to do is just focus on and isolate these two variables, the compensation and the, um, the taxation. Um, so I've created these variables here and the first uh, three pages here, 12, 13, and 14, are based on um, the 2320, the 23 um, year being exactly what we presented on March 28th. So that includes a um, devaluation increase going to additional revenue. You can see that on lines 10, 11, and 12 there of this particular scenario. We'll look at a scenario later on where uh, we don't take the valuation increase. So I, I'd rather not address that right now, but focus on the salary increase. The salary increase um, that we showed in the um, March 28th um, valuation, or excuse me, presentation was 3%. So um, going through and looking at that, this, this creates sort of a baseline, this first scenario. And so if you look on page uh, 13, let me bring that up here. The Actually, page 14, I'm trying to hear. It's kind of awkward having these in PDFs. This is the um, actual computations that um, are created by those variables. And you can see down here on line 29, um, the Unencumbered cash ending balance for 2023. That's on, um, again, let me find it here. Page 14, line 29. And we come down to an ending unencumbered cash balance of $7,334,000. Under these um, variables and scenarios, that would go down the next year to uh, 6,782,000 and the following year to 6,306,000. So if you put that in a graph, um, which is what's on page 13 and compare that to the 10% uh, of expenditures, which is on, again, on page 14, line 30, 32, you get a graph that looks like this on page 13. So what we're showing here, and again, I know we're gonna go through this quickly, but we'll be able to come back later on uh, and speak more to this. Uh, you get a graph that looks like this. The, um, the cash balance, projected cash balance is declining here. Uh, the 10% of expenditures is increasing because the overall budget for the next um, two years increases in this scenario. So that you come out on... Uh, the 25 year with the um, 
unencumbered cash estimate under these circumstances or scenario variables to be about close to equal to the um, 10 and a half percent of expenditures. That's what this graph represents. What it doesn't represent to me is it needs to be added what our students have decreased. In this is, I, I'm not sure. I'm, well, I'm just focusing on some variable. We really don't have time here. We can, we can take time at an upcoming work session to go through this in detail. I just want to show you what um, this graph under these scenario, under these variables would create. We could spend all night going through different variables if we wanted to. But the variables can show us. I'm just saying this is this is a a set of circumstances. What I want to demonstrate to you is what would happen if we change two particular variables. So I'd like to move on to the next uh, set here, which is the variables being shown on I would maybe just make a comment. To Page 15. I, I just feel as representing the taxpayers, we see enrollment going down, salaries going up. I mean, how is our local people's fault that, you know, students aren't attending and attendance isn't going up? When does the administration take responsibility to get more students in here to, to actually make the income to pay for all this stuff and not just slump it off on the taxpayers? I would, say, I would say, Shelby, sorry to interrupt you, but I think those are legitimate questions. That's discussion that needs to happen. That's why I presented the budget calendar as a whole. We don't have time tonight to do that. But what we do need to make time at an upcoming uh, work session to delve into that. You, you need to have that question discussed and answered. I just feel that this is a presentation of if you don't raise taxes, we're going to assume it. And I, but I understand we can talk about it later. It's just I just wanted to. Yeah. All I wanted to show you here is um, what's, what could happen if we change First of all, the salary scenario, because we're going to need to make a decision for uh, our negotiations. And um, when we presented the update in March, we were showing a recommended salary increase for next year of 3%. As we've reflected on that and looked at what's going on in the economy, the difficulty that we're having hiring people, we don't think that's in the best interest of the college to only budget for a 3% increase for our staff and faculty next year. So what I wanted to show you here, and this shows on page 15 on line 18, um, a possibility of changing that to a 5%. In, we will need to talk to you not only in a work session, but also in an executive session, because uh, this is uh, going to be something that we need to uh, get a consensus of at the board moving forward in negotiations. So I just wanted to today kind of give us some foundational information that we can use for future conversations uh, regarding salary increases. Does, so the, does a teacher salary automatically, would an administrator salary have to go up to match that legally? Not legally. No, I mean, they can be done separately. Anymore, I just haven't seen the administration bring us any more students in nine years. So the faculty are responsible for bringing students too. It's not just the administration, it's the entire yeah, college. You guys are in charge of the college. And well, how things are it's, a, and it's a complete effort. It needs to be a complete not effort. Not in charge of setting all the policy. Well, we can't talk about that. We could talk about it now, but we'll be here till about midnight. Yeah, I know. Let's if that's on. what you want to do. I just do, don't want to wait. What I, what, I, what I intended to do was to just uh, isolate a couple of variables yeah, I so it. I could show you what would happen if we changed these the variables. Same my thoughts, so I had, to, I had to say what I was thinking. So okay. I, I get it. I understand what you're, you're showing us. This is we need to keep in mind that we're not always going to have a surplus over the unencumbered 
cash number. And we yeah. need to be looking ahead to what we do each year, especially if we're, we're talking about, if there's a discussion about reducing the amount of taxes we're taking in, that number is going to start, that, that delta to our unencumbered cash number is going to start sliding down. And I think this is just some examples of how quickly that could happen. I but admittedly, that. there are when more variables than are accounted for. When do we as a board get a business plan together that'll make the, profit, the college more profitable? Because if we continue to go down this road, Julie ran, I ran, Kim ran on overburden taxation. If, the, if this administration and the board is so tone deaf to want to raise taxes $3 million a year over the next so many years, the public is aware and paying attention now. How do we safeguard the college if another trustee or two decides it's like, hey, we're totally sick of this and we're going to cut the budget to $8 million or $5 million? And that's much more detrimental than appeasing the taxpayers. I shouldn't even say that to sound bad, sorry. And keeping them to know that we're keeping them in mind because they pay a third of our budget. And if this is just like, we need it, we want it, we're taking it. This is what this administration and did two and a half years ago, and we had a room full of people, and it was just tone deaf. We don't care. We need the money. We got a million dollars of it still sitting here that we didn't spend, and we can't spend it unless it's, you know, directed in, at IT. It's like that's very tone deaf. Yeah, so I, we're I, the only reason I'm here, but good golly, it's like <laughs> can't win instantly. When, when is the right time in terms of our budget calendar when we can have those discussions? Well, we're well, so the next, worst, next yeah. one. Yeah. One, two. But I mean, two we years ago, they, they, they did it at the last second, last second, over the barrel. We have to decide this night or else. And it was, I'd prefer not to wait. Yeah, it does seem like everything that's being presented tonight has been presented before, but then we're told we can't, couldn't talk about it then. We can't talk about it now. That's when, right. When are we talking about it? Because that, I, I have a lot of the same concerns. I mean, if there's, there's got to be more than two variables that are impacting a $30 million there are, budget. There are. I understand that, but that it's being presented as highlight, very obvious. Look at these two things and how they intersect. I, listen, I asked Kent to highlight those so they were obvious and so they were visible. They're not highlighted because they're the only two things that we need to talk about. Right. I asked him for clarification and for ease of conversation tonight to highlight those lines so you could see them easily and highlight them on the budget so that they corresponded. That's the all Kim Brungart's saying is you're taking this data point, this data point, and data point graph. If we don't have the taxes go up, this number will go down with no other variable. That's the only point of that graph. Yeah. Would you would you prefer that we didn't present any kind of information for conversation? That would make it happen. Being disingenuous and when you say stuff like that, it's, no, you shouldn't say you don't, don't want you don't want a graph of any kind. No, we're that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this graph it only presents taxes versus. That's right. Right, that's but where is like where's our well, business plan of bringing more Kent students and more revenue? But it's where's the business plan of we're not going to raise? A single dollar in it's, tuition, and then now we don't have as much money unless we take it from tax. I think it's it's harsh to say disingenuous when when Kent was open up. Front no, when she asked the question, you don't want a graph of any kind. Shall I? Like, no, that's shall what I'm saying. I'm saying if I could, is, if I could address what we wanted to do tonight was set some foundational uh, set a foundation for a couple of decisions that have to be made soon. And one of them is salary. So I just like to, to, to go through the next couple of pages just on salary to show why we presented the salary in this way, if I could. So on page, um, page Yeah, 16, I just wanted to show this graph. The first set of scenario, or the first scenario that we looked at had a raise of um, 3% for, um, for the 23 year, 4% for the 24 year, and 4% for the 25 year. And it gave us uh, the line which on this page shows as the blue line. I've shown that as the baseline. And so um, again, as I mentioned, we would like to uh, visit with you in the upcoming weeks about possibly increasing that in the budget to 5% for the 
23 year. Now, in order to keep the the um, unencumbered cash somewhat close to what the first scenario showed, we would need to lower the outer years um, to two and a half percent. And again, this is back to this point of not changing any other variables at this point in time. And trust me, when we start uh, changing some of the bari other variables, uh, as you'll see in a minute, uh, the graph is going to look a lot different. So um, again, that's that's what we wanted to show you for salaries. And, and basically, that's the foundational piece that we uh, wanted to show you as we move on uh, during the next couple of weeks in discussion on that. Um, we would like particularly, um, again, to visit with you in exec session about this because that is a negotiated item. So we'd like to move on uh, to the next three pages, which show what would happen again if we take a different scenario with the local taxes. So moving on to page, um, actually, yeah, moving on to the next page, which would be 17. This takes the, um, the compensation scenario. 18. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to look, talk about the, the variables which are on page, excuse me, 18. And what this does is um, lowers the mill levy on line nine to an amount that will keep the taxes to be levied on page 12 at the amount that was levied for um, the current year, YE22. So in other words, no increase in the taxes to be levied over the next three years. And if we keep all the other variables um, the same as they were, and I think this probably leads into the discussion you want to have, Shelby. Okay, if we leave all those variables the same, what else would have to change? We don't have that answer for you tonight. But if we kept all the other variables the same, um, the, the first graph that we showed you um, shows revenues from local taxes that would uh, more or less take advantage of the estimated uh, valuation increase over the next three years. If we don't take any of that valuation increase, then you can skip over to the graph on page 19 and you can see that this is what would happen to our unencumbered cash if we don't make any other changes uh, during that time. So again, I think this goes back sort of to the idea that uh, was alluded to earlier that we have a lot of one-time money right now. If we give that money back and offset that with money that goes into the budget on an ongoing basis, it doesn't take long for unencumbered cash to drop significantly. Um, so again, we can talk about this as much as you want tonight. I think it's more a topic that needs to be looked at in depth uh, at a work session where we more or less uh, would dedicate an entire session to this topic. Yes. I was just looking at the line and I added the tax amount of 12,928,138 12, for year 2021. Uh, on page 17. And I, I know that I keep hearing you say if nothing else changes. And am I to assume that the taxation for Butler County will be pretty much this? And even though we continue, even if we continue to plummet student use, there's not going to, you, you did say providing there are no changes anywhere. Yeah. I'm so I'm, I'm going to 
assume that we're going to continue to drop and still we're going to have higher taxes. And I know that seems funny to you, but what am I missing? In that? I'm not, I don't think it's funny at all, quite frankly. Zero decline, just flatlining enrollment, which is not what I think we've we need, yet, but probably that's, that's need, what it's based on. We need to have a conversation about, okay, if this is going to happen, what, what else is going to change at the college? You know, we have three major sources of revenue. We have um, an expenditure budget that's at least 75% um, personnel. So are we going to cut personnel drastically to do it? I mean, you know, that's a conversation that I think you got, you've alluded to that you want to have. So we need to have that conversation. And what would that, the effect of that be? And where would that be? Uh, these are not questions we're going to answer tonight. We and so an answer before this budget either, but I hope by next year's budget we'll know sports locations and have more data and we have more discussions prior. I don't expect anything like that in the next two months. But I think that the takeaway though, the concept is so much of our budget is personnel. Exactly. It's, it's not feasible to simply say, I mean, to one of Julie's points from a meeting or two ago, if your revenues go down by 15%. Why aren't you cutting 15% in cost? Right. It doesn't work that way when personnel is the largest right. cost component and whatever percentage of our personnel are represented, we are extremely hamstrung in how we can handle decisions. But if we did on those. an analysis and did Pareto principle of 20% of our programs are gonna make us 80% of our budget. There's gonna be 20% of our programs that cost us 80%. We need to identify that and possibly cut it if we have to. I understand their teachers and their jobs and their important and their heroes. 60% of them are from Wichita or abroad. And taxes are all paid by Butler County people. 80% of the kids are from abroad. There's a lot of community colleges right now fighting for a small amount of kids. I would like to see us differentiate ourselves from everybody else and do something courageous and, and, and inspiring to people to get them to come here and not just do everything everybody else does. And there's nothing different than Butler except for a little less expensive. Show me if I could, I'd like to go back to something you said because I think it's it's exactly right. I think what I heard you say was that you'd like to see us bring you as much information over the next three, you know, month or two months to make the best decision you can at this time. But I think I heard you say there's sort of an understanding that it's going to take more than that time to really, if we want to consider it all, more drastic um, changes and whether those changes would be appropriate, that this needs to be an ongoing conversation, even probably beyond. I'm not, I'm not saying I want to do any of it. I just, we don't have the data to even make the decision. Yeah, we don't have it. That's and I, I, I would agree that that conversation needs to happen. Right. This is my third budget I've approved without really having all this data. I mean, I just, so I would let me I mean to your comment about doing some innovation things innovative things and do some things that are differentiators do a, a quick elevator speech just on well I just want to say a couple of things too I mean you remember if we cut programs that means we're cutting enrollment too so we want to we want to program be, that costs us money versus what if we, we cut massage therapy well that's but, something we didn't need we but have remember to to consider right but our our programs also enroll students in other areas too so well, you start we, cutting programs that will impact we enrollment can't do everything and then we'll really not be um but i will say you know being being we have launched many differentiator and innovative ideas uh but i would say the one thing that we're missing and i know we talked about this earlier is the marketing component because we can do all these things and we can talk about them but if if the people that we're trying to attract to the college don't know about them we're we're just Again, we're going to not see our enrollment increase because nobody knows what we're doing over here, and it's and that's where we're going to get our population from is is from the West because that's where it's growing. I so I think Butler's I think we need. I do think we want to advocate for growing the marketing and growing our brand presence uh, to the West of us because that's where our population's growing. What I'm, I'm talking about specifically is like the culture. Like Mary and I last year said, we want the board just as a board. We're all adults, we can talk about everything at college. We don't endorse CRT. We don't endorse it, whatever. Just make the statement. We couldn't even make the statement. So we're just like everyone else. But in a conservative community, if we had the 
gravitas to say to the courageous stand like if they want to teach it in school we don't care we honestly don't we're just we don't endorse it so if a student wants to say hey i don't agree they agree you argue that's college you can battle ideas and then you grow a little bit if we could say that just simple word in one sentence people would be like do your welfare county you're not going to endorse it i mean doesn't mean it won't be taught. I mean, and it just, could be just something things. like that. But I just see us all doing the same thing everywhere all the time. Actually, we all I, have billboards, we all have buses, we all have radio ads, fast. TV ads, and we're all the same. We're community colleges come here, save some money, go to four years. Like, what's different than besides location of price? It actually it's the students who bring in the other students. The your, your students that are coming from all of your Wichita schools and all of the other schools, they go back home and they start talking to their friends about Butler. And they start talking about, hey, you know, you've got an agricultural program that's a, a top-notch agricultural program. You've got a athletic program that's top-notch athletic program that sends, you know, some students to the pros. And you've got other programs that lead into it. And I can understand having people now that schools are starting to allow counselors and different people in to help market Butler. I will tell you that the 99% award that we participated in at uh, in the Wichita School District, a lot of those kids came to Butler. And they were kids that probably weren't going to think about college. Well. If it was a few kids, who cares? A few kids is more than no kids. And so I, 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 to a certain degree, education is not a nuts and bolts. It is the kids enrolling in school. It's the kids hearing from other kids, hey, come to Butler you know you will you will have a student to teacher ratio that will allow you to succeed in uh you know uh you attend a music program here or you attend some other program here by golly you're going to get blown out of the water it, it's just the way it is and and you know uh I'm proud to represent the people of El Dorado who, who think a lot of this college, you know, and the people of Butler County who think a lot of this college. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, that I meet along the way that are in the state. Oh, yeah, my kid went down to Butler. I was at a baseball game and met somebody's father, you know, and it, it was like, oh, yeah, we're from Kansas City. Yeah. No, I, I really like Butler. All my kids go here. I graduated here. I'm not anti-Butler. Can we get an organized plan of how we're going to do our work sessions? Because these are all valid points, but I think we do need a couple of more work sessions. Maybe we should have one this week. I think more than this. Because an hour and a half with- I don't want more meetings, but I think we do. It would be, it'd be beneficial. I mean, I think we need some scenarios. I think, <coughs> I, think, I think we need to say, well, what if? Mm -hmm. I think to Ken's credit, he's kind of sounding the alarm bells and I'm going to throw out something wild and crazy. And like, don't even respond. Everybody just sleep on this <laughs> simple thought. If we massacred our budget, cut it in half, cut the middle levy in half, and we were these massive heroes, then I personally would see a few, maybe two, three hundred dollars a year savings on my taxes. That's not going to make or break me. It's probably not going to make or break most homeowners. It, this is like a bigger problem, and, and I think it does stem back to when the state changed how it funded things. If you think of the most popular school district, sought after, highly sought after, most prosperous, yada yada, around here, it's Andover. Blue Valley. I'm saying around here. Okay. We're staying in Wichita. Yeah. <laughs> She's right. There. And yeah, <laughs> they don't allow out of district students in. If we're being told that oh, it'll never pass at the state level that all the counties are gonna come in and take care of the community colleges. Well, what if all the community colleges band together, band together and said, well, then you can't come to our college. And you just for two years, maybe Cedric County would decide, oh, wait a minute, 
that's a real value to our residents. We need to make that happen. We don't have any superintendent in Rose Hill that will say nothing. We say got no kids what? coming in, you know, to any student that wants to come in to have yeah. that free college because they come in all the time from Wichita. Well, my, point, my point being is <laughs> desperate times, desperate measures, I guess. You know, I, I don't want to see this scenario happen. I don't think anybody in this room does. And we can sit here and argue till, our, till we're blue in the face over whether or not our mill levy is going to be 13, 14, 15. And it's going to really, at the end of the day, have a minimal impact on, I think, on each particular taxpayer. And it's not fair. The way the taxes are done at a state level right now are not fair. So we have to figure out a way to make them want to make it fair. Otherwise, we're just going to be sitting here screaming at each other every year, trying to save two, you know, five hundred thousand dollars, which doesn't fix the problem, you know, and it doesn't make Butler as a county any more attractive for people to come build here, live here, do whatever. And you know, I, I think we do have a stellar product. product. So make people want to pay their part to come use it. Food stuff. But one of the things I'd like to see. And I don't know, maybe I'm asking for too much here. They have a really unique report, very good report called the Overhead Report that lists all the expenses that all of the departments have every month. And then it also has a cumulative year to date. It's very handy. And of course it's it's very it's very detailed to me. It's good enough. I don't have to have it more detailed than that. But I've also wanted a labor report. And the reason being is like in negotiations that I'm attending. Usually what happens in negotiation applies to the entire college. So you can't just say it's only going to happen to the, what, 300 teachers. It's going to happen to all the employees that work for Butler Community College, which I'm not going to address good or bad. I'm just saying if you don't have a labor report equal to the expense report by department, which I don't have, then how can I, how can you possibly anticipate what kind of effect it's going to have how can you anticipate what negotiations are going to have if you can't see that i can't even find it on our website and i'm not bitching at him i'm just saying that i i get on the website and i and i see mr rikabaz uh, department is totally up to date and he claims it's because he doesn't have a lot of turnover well other departments aren't all there a, a nice little synopsis of the department and person that leads it on there would be so great for every student that gets on there because to see before they sign up and would sell the college I think so much better than no offense but fifty thousand dollars worth of banners on the buses in Wichita yeah that, anyway that's my two cents so until I get that report that I shows me more that, meetings I think Mary's right <laughs> yes you'll call them nice I need agree. that I need I that info we're not going to have another work session before the scheduled meeting in May. Right. Because we have it's two weeks away. So I think the question is we need to be thinking between now and May as to whether we think one work session at the end of May is enough before the meeting in June and then a work session at the end of June. And if we think we need one more in there, and I'm not saying we don't, I think there's a ton of discussion. And maybe we decide that our next work session is. 430 to 10 instead of 436 but we need to decide how we want to do that because my suggestion is we go for may 3rd the monday before our board meeting and then we <coughs> also have one on the 23rd but after that folks we're getting into holidays graduations yeah. so i i would most or you know say that we need to have one on may 3rd well, excuse me may 2nd so next monday correct and we have an outline of what we can discuss, but I mean, maybe we need to break into little groups and say, okay, we're going to work on this and bring our report back. But all of us sitting in here debating and arguing, so we're not going to get anywhere. I'm not sure. I'm going to advocate for the, the administrative team. I'm not sure because Shelly's got um, payrolls that she's running this week. And I, I'm not sure that, that Kent and his finance people can put information together and have it ready again by next Monday. Do we I need more we information? Have a discussion I don't think we need more that. information. I think we, I think we just need a discussion. You what? I just think we need to talk as a board. Yeah, and have I do too. Sit around. And but they don't need to come. Well, I think we're we're we got to have it. They, they to tell their job to be here and support us, even if we don't want information ahead of time. We're, we're committing them to be here. Let me go to ask questions. Um, 
I have a few comments. Uh, number one, I'm in favor of uh, levying a mill that we can sustain, not just for one year, but for multiple years. I think we need to be looking at these budgets for multiple years, not just what are we setting today. A good example would have been had we had a very clear understanding of what different changes. I mean, uh, Kent just gave us two variables, but if we knew what these changes and the impacts were, I mean, we get through the first uh, semester, we know whether the budget's going down or not. When we have to make that decision later on, like we did a few weeks or months ago about tuition, we have a lot better understanding of you know where we're coming. If we have a three-year plan, we keep everything else like we've agreed, then what would the impact to tuitions be? Um, of course, I am not in favor of revenue neutral rates. I worked 18 years in this county to build the tax base. This revenue neutral rate, yes, the appraised value goes up, but you have to look at how much of that appraised value is on the commercial side with new things. Uh, BG products alone, brings a tax base equal to 250, uh, 250 homes at $250,000 each. They're taxed from one business. So we aren't really, the revenue neutral piece is informational to the taxpayer. If we aren't raising the mill levy, then yes, we are taking in more money, but we're saving them in a way from having to have the mill levy raised because we went to revenue neutral and we still need money. So, I mean, and I can tell you that I've had projects over the years that have raised the commercial appraised values by several hundred million dollars. And we've got lots of projects that are still ongoing. So. There's that, but I would like for us to look at the three-year view that we understand what we need to be changing as things go on. I'm not, I know everybody appears to think I must be some rubber stamp, but I wanna look at all the numbers and I wanna see what we do best. And I wanna look at things that I've seen in the past by entities that made poor decisions by spending down reserves or not thinking about that. You know, we looked last month at, okay, well, here's an extra X number of dollars. We'll give it back. There isn't really a give it back because you give it back, you lower the mill levy, but you have to turn around if you can't sustain it and raise it back up. And I made the, uh, the thing that aggravates me the most back when I still had a mortgage on my house was your escrow uh, reconciliation now you need to pay an extra $40 a month. Oh, well, now they got that wrong. The next year you go down 80 and the next year you go up 120 because they can't keep straight, you know, because your insurance premium changed. The same thing would happen if we start bouncing back and forth and, and that's hard. And I agree with Kim. Um, I do want to save the taxpayers money. I, d I don't want them to have to anticipate us raising the mill every, every year. But I think if we're going to be realistic about it, we can't buy a loaf of bread today or a gallon of gas today, what well, we bought it last year. Not that gas is a good example or a loaf of bread, but I think we need to be looking at a much bigger picture, two, three years and, and be in some, I mean, let's not fight about the stuff. Let's talk through right, it and right. say what works best and not picking on the marketing piece. But I mean, we, I think we have to realistically say, if you need more help, but do you really need more than your existing budget in, in new marketing monies? And, and by the time you hire the people, what impact is that really gonna have on the first semester? I mean, let's think through this and let's approve things we can sustain and uh, just make this easier and more informational. I had a couple points. The mill levy is kind of a reveling here. It is. I mean, it's the total dollars that people are taxed. So right now we're at $12.9 million. The mill levy is going to fluctuate. Mill levy is confusing to everyone. I'm not sure it wasn't designed to tell me on purpose, but we're taking 12.9 million now. Do we need to take more next year or is 12.9 fine? And the thing is too, if you look at the last three years, 
we've declined enrollment every year, but we're not, we're planning to, to flatten out. It's like, well, that's not a proper plan. If we're truly planning for all the variables, we would plan a 5% decrease. Hopefully we turn things around and have a bump instead of. So if we started the decrease, I mean, we can do that. Then we have to change some of these other things to make up for it. We don't want to raise. My point is the mill, the mill levy is what you're saying. I mean, it's somewhat right. irrelevant, except it has very little impact. If it stays the same, somebody's the appraised value that doesn't change or doesn't change much, it has very little impact on that. And I would, I would suggest that the impact of tuition of $102 a credit hour, $122.5, it's $130 a credit hour to a student taken. That's the person who is using the service, and that's the person who should pay for such service. And they should you know, pay another $30 to $50 per semester instead of the residents right. of the town. So we can't change what we've already done. We can just look to the future and figure out what is that. And then I want to make one point. Uh, along the way, uh, we did a project and worked on uh, graduates from Butler County, and it's all available at the state. So we took all of the high schools and we looked at how many graduates total. It's really a little over a thousand with all the high schools. And then they reported who went to four years, who went into the workforce and so forth. I mean, we, based on that information, if it remained, we'd only be getting 500 students to maybe 700 at the most, but really not, about 500 students a year out of our Butler County High Schools. That doesn't sustain this organization. And, and like I said, I'm willing to look at all the numbers, but I, I don't want to have a, I do have a set mindset on revenue neutral because I've worked with it for so long. But uh, like I said, I'm willing to take a big look at everything, but I don't want to fuss. I mean, I want say what you say what you think. Let's say it nice. Yeah, so say it nice. Let's talk That's about it. Talk about. Yeah. Do we want? Do we as a board want to meet next Monday, or are we fine waiting until the May meeting and then scheduling something sooner? This is I'm fresh. Happy to meet. I'd I'd rather meet you too. Make Monday. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I do have other things to do. How about you? I have one other comment, Linda, just to hit my mind when you're talking. Our county has not really grown at all in the last 10 years. We got like a thousand more people. So 1.7. Oh, okay. But anyway, I, uh, I don't know. It's just what are we doing as a county to grow? Not, I mean, the college brings people to our county that don't live in our county, but it hasn't. Well, talk to your county commissioners about not really having a. Um, economic development program for the county hmm. it's the saddest thing well, for the largest that county is in charge oh come on we do not have an organized the economic David. development that's so right we don't <laughs> we also have a terrible plan when it comes to development that one side of butler county should have completely different zoning regs than the other half it's night and day and the fact that they're governed by the same concepts are ridiculous and we could be having so much more growth and so much if, if we were we forward thinking flexibility yeah so exactly you know, that's the, this 4 30 so like there's consensus to have a meeting next monday 4 30 4 30 or yeah. do you want it open-ended how long do you want it do you want me to get food for you it would be great i hate it so <laughs> 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 Four thirty to whenever. I think yeah. that's. I think Amy would be more than late enough. Four four thirty then. I yeah, no later games. than eight. I can teach you guys some games. Eat while we talk. But we are. It's if we are in. We have consensus that we're not asking for additional information from. Well, from anybody. We've got we a have a lot here to mull over. Yeah. I'm sorry, but can we have a flip chart in here too? And, to and work we've on? got this whole budget. <laughs> yeah, then you guys can have the flip chart when we leave. We've got a lot to look at, really. <laughs> Just um, to see things up there, we've got to come up. It is it is six fifteen right now. Since, since since we are meeting next Monday, do do we want to? 
uh, information so, request tabled to next Monday? Or no, let's go ahead and get it over with yeah, so we can I'd start like on our budget on first thing on Monday. Front page. And that, I didn't mean to cut you off. If you had more to talk about on the operating budget. He's like, please let me stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think we can uh, move through this fourth topic, I don't know, I think fairly quickly. Um, you know, um, there's some information in your packet that uh, starts on page, let's see, 21. I guess my report is on page 21. I can run through it fairly quickly. Uh, Julie, excuse me, Trustee Winslow, um, really summarized uh, some of this earlier. She asked for a report uh, that would tie uh, individual employees uh, to the over-under report. On the, the last page of this document, I'm sort of giving you a summary of what the over-under report would look like. Uh, it's about a 400 page document, but it, it gives payroll, non-payroll, I, I wrote payroll, it should be total on that third set of columns there. Um, year to date, actual budget and an over under amount uh, for every line item within that department. And so is our understanding that Trustee Winslow would like us to provide more or less real time um, year to date information for employees that would tie in to that. We, we don't have any way of doing that in a really practical manner at this point in time. Uh, two points here. Uh, we do have salary sheets, uh, and this is um, sort of the third set of bullets on page 21. We do have salary sheets that are maintained by the accounting department that show the budget by individual employee that will tie back to the over under report. That's how we've managed basically uh, for the 30 some years that I've been here. Uh, the other point I'd like to make, and this goes back to the some of the one-time money that we have that uh, Bill and I talked about, we would like to have uh, in the future uh, some IT consultants come in and do a business process analysis of a lot of our areas to see if there are ways that we could improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of some of the reports that we generate. Uh, but at this time, we don't believe we have a better solution. There's not a record. So this doesn't really qualify as an open records request that we can comply with. Wait a minute. So uh, that's that's my point of view, respectfully submitted on this report. And I'm sure Trustee Winslow would like to respond. Yes. Um, on page 21, you said that you do already have a Excel spreadsheet with detailed information that reconciles budgeted employee salaries by department. Now, if you have them by department and they're by administrators, institutional support coaches, and operational staff, full-time faculty, that's pay code. There's some kind of code that's going to accompany all of these. Yeah, I, I know that the information is there. It's within the bowels of the banner system. But wait. Is it in this report already? Do you write down, you, okay, you obviously do it in detail by department. Do you also include? Well, we, what we do for the uh, salary sheet information that the accounting uh, office generates is we get a list of employees and how much their salaries are from HR. So there's a reconciliation pro process between accounting and HR, we, we know which employees are budgeted. So every year, and we update this two or three times a year, we go in and we show what the budget is by individual. And then that's the budget that goes over to the over under report. Then the budget officers see the year to date uh, expenditures and they're able to compare that to the amount that's budgeted in total for their department not by employee. Uh, employee. Some employees, their salaries are split between different departments. And it, there's no way that we can give a real time 
a year to date expenditures, which is part of what you asked for. Well, I'm trying not to build this from scratch. So what you're telling me is you don't have anything like that, which blows me away. But I understand I'm not in. But I'm I say if I could just respond to that, because I know at the meeting you said you didn't understand how we managed without this. Right. The way we manage is that we know the individuals in those departments. We can see, but in each department, uh, say we're halfway through the year, we know uh, what the variance is and compare that to what is normal halfway through the year for that department. And if there's a discrepancy, then we can go back and look at it. You know, if we have unfilled positions or turnovers, it will affect that. And so we, we know that happens. Yeah, last time I looked, you had 33 positions. Up. It's partly because we can't pay enough. Throughout the year, it's, it's well, and and I understand right. employees being in two. Heck, throughout my teaching career, my my salary came out of three three funding sources. I believe there's a correction that needs to be made. I believe Linda Jolly was at that meeting on April 12th. Am I correct? Yes, she are. Okay, mm -hmm. just wanted to make note of that. That's my bad. So, now, I would say, Julie. Uh, what, do you we have? Get, what do you have already then that can give me pay codes by department? So we, we have the, the, the all departments and then all the pay codes within that department. What, what do you mean by pay code? Well, there's a pay code assigned to everyone. There's one for Kim as administration. She probably got the only one, the president. So that would be her own pay code. Then so, there's one for you, which would be department head or department director of, we, of we, HR. We say, when we speak of pay code, pay codes are things like vacation, regular, sick leave, overtime, holiday. Pay. Okay, what do Those you call them? Classification? Yeah. Okay. More of an employee class. Okay, then classifications is fine. Okay. Those yes. are the classifications I've listed here on page 21. The classifications we use are administrator, right. institution support, coach. Yeah. There are others, but these are the major ones. Those are the ones that carry as keeps in this Excel spreadsheet and updates two or three times a year. What can you give me that? We can give you that. I would I would like to see that. We can give you that. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make one note to that though. It doesn't have it, it only lists their contract and how it coincides with budget. So we don't add a column for where they are, like how much they've been paid. So it's the one it's budget numbers, not actuals. Yes. Yeah, budget. So how do you know where you stand actual wise? You can look at the percent, like for instance, on that over as a report, it, it says percent spent. So if it's in December and your percent spent is at 80%, You're dead. you know, you know that okay, we need to make sure that some other department if this department's over budget. Okay. But when you look at how much has been contracted um, by a certain department, you're going to know that you should have not cover that. Like that's the part that I'm looking at. Then if, some, if there's something paid out of that department that shouldn't be, it's going to show up because you can have 80% or something uh, percent spent in December. That's just an example. Well, if you reconcile the budget report once a month, which is probably how you do it with the actuals, I would, I would assume that you do. You don't no, that's too labor. Yeah, I look at the contracted versus the contracted versus the budget, like you spoke to like two or three times a year. Um, I do look at hiring proposals as they come through. So if someone uh, gets replaced, I usually check what that other person is making they replace so I can kind of have an idea that way you can also kind of keep my, my mind you know you, you see things come through you have a lot that's coming through that's a lot more um, contract a lot higher than the person that they replaced and, you know, so if we were getting ready to do the budget and I asked you how many people have you hired within the last five years and at what would you call this 
you don't call it pay code, you call it class. classification. You would be able to tell me that or not be able to tell me that easily. We would have to go back to the individual reports and do analysis. I do it at annual, but I do it as a year. I don't oh okay. it's five years before. You've already done it for all the past years. I mean, we keep salary sheets for each year and we have for like 30 years, as Kent mentioned. But I don't think we have those. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that those have not been on the past. We have for several years. Yeah. Yeah. Or like the past five, so that a person could maybe tell. Well, those aren't updated every month or every two months. It's just that's no, probably but... every quarter, maybe. But you constantly have open positions and people coming and people going. <clears throat> so, so, go ahead. Never mind. Sorry. I think what she's asking is can we look at the positions over the past five years to see how the number of positions have changed? We've actually done that. Before. Where the growth has been. No. Looking uh, for the growth. Just total number. You're not asking for positions that are right. vacant. Well, that's it. That's the, the yeah, I'd like that to we're know looking. my department too, but you know. Right. But, uh, we, but, have, we have it more so by classification. So by we department. did it. No, by, by, by administration versus institutional support versus operations versus faculty. So we I'm, have. So. I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, what would the information tell you that, yeah. you know, I mean. It like, tells me how heavy we are in salary. I can how, I can tell you that educational institutions are, heavy, are yes. always heavy in yes. salary. But they just told us it was anywhere from seventy five to eighty five percent. Yes, you go to any place it'll always be that. And we have done that. And then it's not that much. Then you you're not dealing with an education institution. I'm dealing with other community but, colleges. But education institutions don't buy buy furniture every year Look, and things like that argument, David. i just want to see where we've been so that i can justify what the budget's going to be that's all that's what an accountant does that's my background i'm uh, so I, sorry I think, well, I think the question we have tonight you is know that you, are are you hearing a report that they have that gets you what you are comfortable with because if you want them to i think it'll get me on, on. It, okay okay if you're comfortable with that's fine if you want them to create something, then we've got to decide whether we want to spend the, the money to do it. It's going to take a while. Well, that's why I it's suggested. Not core, it's not a core request. That's why I suggested consulting with BKD. Well, BKD, BKD doesn't BKD. run banner. They don't. BKD. They don't do. BKD no, but us. they do extrapolate a lot of information for their annual audits every year, and they probably <clears> would know how to get that information. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't think they do. They well, they it, they I would say if what you're looking at is say within <coughs> the department, how the personnel has changed, the way we could get that information is say go back five years on the salary reports. It would be a manual process to a certain extent. We can sort those by department. Yeah. And we can look at how many positions are in each department. This is something that would take the accounting office several hours probably to do, but we could probably go back. Isn't what do you think, no, Carrie? Well, and, and Shelly could speak to this too, but if, if we're looking at positions in a certain department, Shelly, um, are there in banner? Well, um, let, me, let me start again. Um, the salary worksheets probably would give you uh, the, the number of positions in a, in a department for those classifications that we were just talking about. Um, you talking about salary sheets? Yeah, I'm talking okay. about, yeah, unless I you don't even know if I need more, dollars it would be easier as much to as run. Do you have a report that you yes. can run just the positions? That's yes. what I got. There's I don't think you can run salary sheets. Run my department, are. and you can run by you know what the positions are in each board. And I, I did give Julia a, a report of that. Yeah, I tried. And then there's also you know a um, you know employee salary report. 
that you can run. Here. So there are some things. It's just not I don't everything in one place. Yeah, I think that. So I, I guess I want to. I want to. Is know that? a little bit more Sorry. about the needed value of a report like this as opposed to just having an overarching report that shows the changes in the number of administrative positions, the yes. number of have to get it. There's uh, a little notch faculty positions, off. you know, See on an off. annual basis. What what's the value in having an individual report like that in the time that it's gonna take these guys to well, that's why I'm trying to get something that you already have. I think what we're saying, what we you're asking for is not in one place. We, we can, can pull together the total numbers of the changes of these different categories of classifications over a period of time. We can show you how the number of administrators have changed and the number of institutional support positions have changed. Those total numbers, but it's not divided by individual position or individual person. Or department. Or department. I mean, I don't understand. You can still hear the thing. It's in the moment. <laughs> I can go turn it off. Is there is there something specifically you're looking for that? Are you looking for individual people? They would know what. Thank you. Or what? Because you wanted the org charts before too. What? Well, I was trying to figure out. I was trying to do it myself. I was trying to understand how many how many were were in each classification. Understand how many were teachers, professors, uh, overhead staff. Uh, is it so you support can try staff? And try yeah, to so figure I can out are you looking for areas that you think are overstaffed? No, I'm or... just looking for, I'm just trying to understand how it can be so much. That's all. The, how it can be. The salaries or the? No, I, I just don't, I just think it's a lot. So I'm trying to understand what it all is. Maybe once I understand what it all is, I won't think it's so much. Does that make sense? No, probably not. No, it does make sense. I mean, to me. But I, I don't want you to have there, to go to Is there a more trouble? generalized thing she can look at first, like what Kent was saying, and see if that, and if you have any follow up questions, make a specific question on that. <laughs> I have the code. Yeah, I would say that when, when I think about trying to help get that information, I think of it from a finance perspective. Shelly thinks about it more from the HR, which may be the better way to get about it. I, I would refer to, to her probably initially. See, like, what if you do have totals? You, you have told me that. So I know that you do have totals. You just don't have them by department. So well, you have totals over, by the classification. Over under, the over under is by department. I mean, as far as that right, has, but that doesn't have labor in it. That is yes, personnel. Those are reports are by department. Yes, not, personnel and non personnel. Not the growth. Not no, the growth. not the individual people. No, but it has the total. Yeah. But not by classification. Well, and in December, well, the over under. Can give you a pretty in December, answer. the over under report basically showed that every department it, in the halfway point of the year was someplace in the neighborhood of 45 to 60%. And I'm assuming that once they start getting into July or getting to the end of June, they'll have, have spent close to 100% of their money, generally, including salaries. That's generally, yes. That's three. What the budget is two years. Did you smash it? No. Did you put it in the toilet? Put it in a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm almost to the end of my phone. Or I'm due for a new one. Anyway. It's got some problems. It's got some perks. <laughs> it's got some problems with the operating system. For, for all of the discussion and criticism that some have had, there's never been a question about does the college manage the budget? So that's yeah. where, that's what I'm having a hard time understanding what what you where you want to take this information, knowing that we're 63% to budget in a particular department. That's just never been an issue before. And we've never thought it was an issue before. So, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, maybe I'm not articulating what it is you want, but I'm not understanding what, where you're going with. I don't understand request. how we can possibly negotiate a contract at that point. Because we talk about the retention thing, we can't talk about it. Never mind. We can't talk about any of this, but yet it's a big part. How do you know how that's going to affect one way or another without something like that? Well, well, when you go well, through negotiations, you also. And every classification, I don't. I look at that every day. So you, so you know.
know in your head how many people are in this classification, that classification, that classification? Pretty much. Okay, well, write it down for me. Write well, it down I, and I, then and then I'll but keep I, track I of can the give you a report that can be sorted by that. I gave you a report that has their salaries. I gave you a report that has their titles. I gave you a report that has their organization. But the data has nuances to it when you are trying to right. look at it from different perspectives. So I can sort a report for you and break it down better. And, and why don't you let me give that a try again? <laughs> yeah, because okay? look, and I really don't want you to create any extra work. Well, we already have. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that somewhere so, they've got, maybe I just need to come in the office and take a look at what you have. There's, it's not that simple. It's not like you could you'll look at a report and go, oh, that's it. Oh, because, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. No, I you know Banner. I would. I know Banner. Do you? Yeah. Oh, really? Where did you work with Banner? At Aeroplus. Where's Aeroplus? Out west. They have the Banner for higher education system. They have Banner for their finance. Oh, well, that's uh, not the same. But it, the tools are similar. They're not. I work with other HRIS systems, and this is nothing like it. So hmm. uh, it's okay. it's a different type of system. Really. It's very and different. It's very different. If I showed you something in this report says the report name is ZPHI123, you'd know what that was. No, but okay. I know if you gave me a, a legend as to what it means to you, because it means different. Well, there's different for... reports that have different type of information that you that, that are pulled from, from different okay. sources, right? From different areas and data banks in the system. So when you want multiple things of data, then we have to create a report to get that because it doesn't live in one place. So I could give you a salary report, but it's not going to have it's not going to have year to date. Well, what they make year to date is just the flat salary that comes out of the system. I can give you this thing that's coming out of payroll, and it'll give you a different number. And so there's lots of different ways to look at it, but not all in one combined report unless we build it. So and so that kind of takes me to the conversation earlier in the budget process when we talked about that the, the business process of analysis and then bringing in one of these banner consulting companies to help us build out these dashboards so that it's easier for Kent's group and Shelley's group and, and really everybody involved to be able to sort and drag these reports from data blocks that we haven't had the capacity to build or to, to mine. So the data blocks, the data is in the system. The challenge is we have data in the system and no real way to get good information out of the system in some areas. Now, there are some areas that we've we've really built up over time. But as some of these questions come in, and we had a chance to look at some of these, um, it, you know, it highlighted that opportunity to maybe move along with another data project here so that we can get good information out of the areas. And, and for, does anybody for else that may see a need to look at stuff like that? I mean, maybe you don't, think, but does I anybody Bill's else? saying that's what's coming. And right now, currently, do you just kind of see a bird's eye view? And if you deviate from what you expect, then you investigate to see what's going on. That kind of like you know what you should expect. And if it goes outside of you know, percentage of where it should be, you know there might be an issue. Yes, um, I, I guess you can kind of say that. But overall, you know, when I do the salary worksheets and I look at what's contracting for each department for those larger pay classes, classifications, as Shelly called it, um, I can tell whether, you know, I can see at that point, okay, well, this is what our budget was, and now we hire these people, when I look at it in the fall, or in the spring, whatever, I can see if I need to, to increase the budget at that time. And a lot of times there's like, need to increase it in one department and decrease it in the other and it all kind of evens out but when i look at that you know those two or three times a year that's when i make those adjustments so it's not just a bird's eye view i'm looking at individual contracts in those departments in those pay classifications okay well i'm pretty sure you can do this that you already have now that we've had more of a discussion. You'll give it some thought. Give thought. We can give you a report, but I think when we can increase the Well, you can always put it through the shredder and shred half of it. So the little. Hold it, hold the birds. Well, 
Whatever she only wanted to not see. Whatever you have given to Julie, could you make sure all the trustees get it, please? Oh, I think they already. Well, I, I, gave, I just gave Julie a sample so that oh, okay. she could look and see if this is going to meet her needs. I haven't had it but i kind of i kind of let it go after they told me that each of the pages took two hours to build I'm like no the whole report took six hours to build but i only gave you two pages so i could so you could look at it and see what is this whole consistency tell me what this page is is this what you want if it is i'll give you the rest of the report because it was like 22 pages long okay i didn't print it all out i'm ready to go home <laughs> I need to ask and ask some questions before you tell leave. us what you're really doing. Okay. Oh yeah. I forgot okay. to respond to that email. Huh? Did you look at my email? I did. Yeah. All right. I need to know. Uh, early College Academy uh, commencement or graduation celebration is May seventh at ten a.m. here in the Clifford Stone Room. Who can attend that? I need a somebody to give a welcome, and then I also would like to know who else might be in attendance. What day is that? May 7th. It's a Saturday. I, I have it on my calendar to attend. So you'll be there, Dave? I will be there. Thank you. I'll be there. I can give the welcome if nobody else wants to. Graduation's fun time. Shelby, you said you'd be there? Yep. Okay. Where's this at? Downstairs? It's downstairs in Clifford the Stone room. Clifford Stone room. And Mary Martha, you said you'd speak? Mm -hmm. I think you did the welcome last year, didn't you? I think so. They'll help you script comments. Uh, Shelby's turn then. <laughs> Anybody Shelby, else you want to give it? Can attend? I'll do it. I'll speak somewhere. I'm terrified yeah. of public speaking, but I'll, I'll do it. Have one. Shelby do it. Uh, yeah, because he, he didn't get to do it last year. I got lots of high schoolers. So who's speaking? Shelby. Shelby. I guess I will, sure. All right. Donnie Featherson will work with you for scripted comments and stuff. Okay. And it's the I'll students that are BBA, graduating and parents and family and stuff. I'll try to do like I did last time with Larson. Yep. Yeah. He'll, I'll have him get a hold of you. Okay. All right. Nurses Penny, May 12th, Thursday night, 7 p.m. It's in the gym. The as I indicated in my email, the trustees will sit in the bleachers near the front. Whoever does the welcome will sit on stage. Um, but I need to know who will be at Nurses Penny. Can you yep. tell me one more time what time that was? May 12th, 7 p.m. You would need to be in the gym at six about 6 30. Okay. I have that down on my calendar also to attend. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. Forrester, are you yeah. giving the welcome? Oh, I can't. Well, what did you ask me to gonna, do? He's going to do the welcome at commencement too. Oh, so. okay. I can do the welcome. If anybody else doesn't want, I mean, if somebody okay. else wants to. i got to make sure I get everybody. Shelby, you said you'd be there? Yep. Uh, Julie, yep. are you, are you going to be at the Early College Academy one too? Okay. Well, I'd have Mary do all the talks because she could just like tell them how great they are. Uh, she and cute things. earrings. I can't. And I'm she'll check the out the on the Okay. 7 p.m. on the 12th. Yeah, I'll send you I'll send you calendar invites. They usually try to, yeah. Okay. I uh if Mary Martha's speaking, they'll want you there just a little bit early to get lined up, but the rest of you can come just right before seven and we'll reserve I'll we'll reserve some spots in the bleachers. A hey, honor ceremony is Friday afternoon in the gym, May 13th before commencement that evening, but at 1 30 in the um, in the gym. And that's the one where we recognize our honor of the gold and honor of the purple, or sorry, order of the gold and order of the purple graduates. There's some scholarships that are given away uh, or announced that afternoon. Uh, we recognize some faculty. And so uh you you would sit um on stage the board members would sit on stage but we'll i'll need to know because they set up specific number of chairs and, stuff, and what so. time is that one that's at 1 30. that's so we'd have to be here at, at one and it's on a friday i would say yeah you'd need to be here at one you know 110 or something like that okay. i'll be here dr pro i'll be here i will be here too i'll be here okay i can't say that one <coughs> you can be yeah okay um so i have kim mary martha linda can't be or you can't be you can't be okay Boris can't be dave shelby and julie and i need uh i think i need a it's typically the board chair or the vice chair that provides the welcome which is scripted as well but it doesn't have to be 
We'll just have to tell me he was the almost. Child. I don't know. One, one's enough for me. It's the last one, too. I have zero desire. So I was literally looking I for a place it. to throw up before I got yeah. there. <laughs> so I'm going to go down this hallway and there'll be something. I'm fine, like one on one Ooh. talking to people, but when you're up on a pulpit, if anybody doesn't want to do it, I'll do it. I, I can do that one if, if you want to spread it around. Well, you guys tell me. I don't know. Will it take long? It'll be scripted. Well, yeah, that's fine. Again. That's fine. That'd be Dave Candy. Is make that sure, what you're Make sure deciding? they punch up. The okay. And then commencement is um, Friday evening. We'll need to be at the stadium um, probably about 6 15. Uh, we'll meet up on the second level. Uh, there'll be reserve parking for you, and I'll get that map out to you. I don't know, they'll be right kind of where they were last year, but it's we'll, very we'll get nice. a map out to you. Um, and forest will be, if you're going to get present, yes, okay. Forest will be the, the welcomer and the helper at um, commencement then. So and tell me who I'll will be, be at commencement. Me. Good. I'll be there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Dave will be, Shelby. Yep. Julie. Yep. Okay. Oh, wow. Good deal. Because we set up again specific, and you guys are part of the. I mean, you get introduced and stuff too. So. If you if you want to come to the pres, if you want to come to the Presbyterian Church on Mother's Day, I'm giving the sermon. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think I know. Okay. I will send you calendar invites. For this oh, that's that's perfect. perfect. Send me the. Yeah. You, yep. Yeah. And then the master teachers. Oh, no, no, is it, was, uh, it was Mother's Day. Master oh, Where's your minister? Uh, that's the public house for them. It's your substitute preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have done it. Where's your minister? El Dorado room 1041. El Dorado. I don't know why I have that. El Dorado room. So half the time I put this stuff on here. Oh, that's in the that's in the Our uh, minister. Let me look at that. Our minister does a great job. What? The week of what? Graduation. Mm. Oh, no, oh, our last camps. Oh. And so um, we're not going to. Okay. You know, you don't have to preach. I get it. And then he's going to be gone. He's going to be gone in June, I think. 